Well, here is Jose Rivalta's moment in the sun. He's won his last four fights all by knockout, but he was knocked down in one of them by David Jaco, who incidentally Mike Tyson KO'd in one round. It does appear that Rivalta is warmed up. He's had problems in the early rounds, and of course against Mike Tyson, that's suicide. Well, he has to be warmed up against Mike Tyson. Tyson quite naturally goes directly at his opponent. He goes to war. We asked him about Mike Tyson, what he thinks of him. He said he's just another fella. He's not as good as Bone Crusher Smith. He said he's just got the media behind him. There's an interesting uh, look here. I see that uh, Jose Rivalta does not have socks on, and that's... <laughs> That's the style of Mike Tyson. That is the trademark of Mike Tyson. Black uh, shoes, no socks, black trunks. The difference is, is that while Tyson is sockless from his knees down, he's not sockless from his elbows out. <laughs> 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 and I can't help but be reminded, listening to that music, that when Muhammad Ali pulled off one of the staggering upsets of boxing history and he beat Sonny Liston in Miami, where this young man comes from, the challenger tonight, the opponent, as it were. The first thing Ali did was rush to the ring and start yelling, Sam, Sam, did I shock the world? And it was Sam Cooke. Sam Cooke would roll over in his grave. There's, There's the record of Mike Tyson. Impressive. You know, George Benton, who was in Marvis Fraser's corner, before that fight, said the way to beat Mike Tyson is to throw a lot of punches to keep busy, to keep boxing. But when we talked to Tyson last night, he said, and he said it very simply, very understated like he does, at some point you got to stop throwing punches. Here's a look at the tail of the tape, and of course the only number that jumps out at you is the number on reach. But it was Angelo Dundee who said, don't give me height and reach, give me a guy who can fight. Well, I think the only thing that's overstated about Tyson is his height, which is I think closer to 5'9 than 5'11 and 3 quarters. It is true there's a lot of hype about the man, but despite the fact of all the hype, he seems to be able to live up to the clippings, Larry. And here is our punch stat, our statistical toy to give you a quantitative look at the fight. Interesting thing about Tyson is he throws those 45 punches around, and they're all mean, hard punches. None of that, those probing little jabs. Rebalta's numbers are so different because the two fighters he fought had such different styles. And so what he does will obviously be dictated by what Tyson does. In the red corner from Miami Beach, Florida, with a record of 23 and 3, 16 by knockout, wearing white trucks with a red trim, weighing 211 and a half pounds, Jose Nino Ribalta. And in the blue corner, undefeated in 25 bouts, 23 by knockout from the Catskills, New York, wearing black trunks, weighing 213 and a half, Mike Tyson. I want you both to stop punching and step back, protecting yourselves at all times. Remember, a foul can cost you the round. Mandatory eight count is in effect. Watch your low blows and watch the holding and hitting. Any questions here? All right, I want a clean contest. Good luck to both of you. Let's shake hands. Okay, don't anybody go to the toilet or the refrigerator. Mike Tyson has short working hours. He punches in and punches Punch out. And the battle of stairs was a draw. Now what happens remains to be seen. Pat Putnam of Sports Illustrated probably put it best. Tyson has the anticipation of a Doberman who's happened upon 210 pounds of unguarded meat. Just as expected, Tyson is right in the chest of the Bolton. The Bolton has problems with uh, Marvis Frazier. Couldn't keep him off. And what he's going to have to do against the style of a Mike Tyson is to tie him up when he's inside, not to try to exchange punch for punch. He can't do that. And that was a right hand by Tyson that at least got the attention of Rivalta. He knows the way that Tyson's working the body. He stays very close to his opponent. I've, I've been impressed with the way that uh, Tyson has developed as a fighter. A left hand knocks... Rebalta off balance. Of course, when we talked to Tyson, he said 
I don't mean to take anything away from Tillis, but if I were to fight him again tomorrow, I'd knock him out in one round. That was a pretty good move by Rabot. He was able to tie up uh, Mike, Mike Tyson. Cases like this, you notice he's tying them up, not giving uh, Tyson any punching room. And he has to keep those hands very high. Rabot has to keep those hands up at all times. Big right hand again, but Rivalta stays right there, holds on. You notice that uh, Tyson also is starting to wing his punch, especially to the body. I think with the height advantage, he has to go downstairs first. Stay downstairs and bring those hands down of Rivalta. Because those punches that uh, Tyson throws is going to take a great deal of wearing down on a tall man like Rivalta. Tyson throws some vicious shots to the bottom. Somebody in Rebalta's corner does have confidence and understand they made a significant bet before the fight, taking seven to one odds. They didn't get enough. <laughs> Kevin Rooney in Tyson's corner saying, keep the jab down. Luis de Cuba, Rebalta's trainer, said his man is tough after the first round, so now we'll see. He knows that the uppercut that Rivalta threw. Those are the type of punches uh, that are effective against a guy like Tyson. But you gotta time it. At all times, the attempt to throw that kind of shot is dangerous because one thing about Tyson, he has speed, puts a lot of velocity behind his punches, a great deal of power. There is the uppercut again. And once again, though, you notice he's tying this man up, not allowing Mike Tyson to work his body. Well, it's an interesting technique, Ray, because he's not running like Green did or staying away like Tillis did. Watch your hands in Fighting a little bit of a different tactic. Well, Rebalta stated that he needs to try to make, or he wants rather, to make uh, Tyson respect him. I see a mistake that Rebalta is making. He threw his jab, and at times it lands, but you notice the way that it comes back. It comes back slow and it drops. So right, a counter right hand by Mike Tyson is inviting. And there was an uppercut. What a shot. God gets knocked down with an uppercut. Very seldom, it's a rarity. And That's literally power. took him off the ground. It really did. Volta trying to bang with Tyson and gets off the ropes. body punches are absolutely devastating. It was a good left to the chin. Here's the punch. Terrific uppercut. The reason, or one of the reasons that Tyson has such punching power is that he always stays in punching range of his opponent. He's on top of him, so that those kinds of punches will frequently hit an opponent 
without the opponent seeing the punch, and those are the punches that do the most damage. There it is. Never saw it coming. Stunned him, but he got up and he went on. To his credit. The issue now is to watch how Michael Tyson is going to try to chop down a fellow who is a good professional journeyman. This is the third round, and you would have found a lot of smart money saying that it would go this far. You watch the way that Mike Tyson works that body. It's a thing of beauty. Very short, executed shots to the midsection, to the ribs. When you sit ringside, Tyson's punches even sound differently than his opponents. His body shots are so hard, there's a distinctly different sound to it. The reason being, though, is because he pronates that, that fist and that glove, and uh, he's punching very, very clean, very clean. We'll just sit back and let you listen a little bit, see if you can tell the difference in the sound of Tyson's punches. right there and then the uppercut behind it. Long left hand. Oh no. I break the card up. Break break the holding and then step back, let him go. Fourth round, getting into the category of who to thunk it. No, no. All right, great, great, great. Hold it, hold it. Nice. 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 We will remind you that Harold Letterman, right, our right, official, right, unofficial right, judge right, here right, on right, HBO, right, is scoring the fight for us. And I'm not even sure he brought a pencil. One thing about Rebolt, he is not intimidated. He is not intimidated. In fact, uh, the last round, Rebolt's corner told him, say, hey, game plan is starting to work now. Either they want Tyson to punch himself out, which is not going to happen, or they want him to get careless. Well, he has been more effective in the later round, so I'm sure that's the thinking of his corner, is if he gets by four or five, he will get stronger. He got stronger against Bone Crusher Smith after being knocked down in the first round. Lost a split decision that most everyone feels he won. Rebaldi has been trying to throw some straight right hands, right? It's not going to work. The type of punch is going to work on Mike Tyson is the uppercuts. you got to bring him under because Tyson has that bob and weaving style. Well, Rebaldi got himself in trouble on the ropes again. Nice and 
Tyson just turned southpaw. Both those punches were caught on the gloves of Revolta, incidentally. Oh, I would think Tyson could even hurt you on the gloves. Lunging left hand by Tyson. The right hand is a little short. Another right hand partially caught on the gloves. I think we're getting to that point where the catch-22 that Tyson has created has come into focus. Larry, I've got the first four rounds for Mike Tyson. Based on the four points in which we score the clean punching, Mike is all over him, blending the clean hot shots, the effective aggressiveness, the ring generalship, he takes him up on the ropes. Uh, interestingly enough, for defense, Jose Rebolta seems to be holding. That's his basic defense. You know, he's just trying to tie a Mike up by holding him. It's a survival tactic. But getting back to what I was saying before, this catch-22, if he knocks this fellow out in a round or two, everybody says he just knocked out another bum. When's he going to fight somebody? And if the fight goes longer, everybody says, well, maybe he's not quite that good. But he's, he is in there with a professional. He is dominating the fight. And again, the point right now is to see whether Tyson can sustain his fury and cut this big man down. And I think when you look at the fights that Tyson has taken to a decision, save the Tillis fight, he pitched a virtual shutout against Green. And according to Harold Letterman, he's pitching one here. He lost one round against Mitch Green. His corner told the ball to between rounds, okay, now you can start to dominate the fight. <laughs> I think that's long overdue, Larry. In fact, uh, the ball has been giving away rounds, especially inside. You notice that uh, Tyson throws a great deal of body shots. Starting to, start to slow down the ball. An uppercut by Rabalta and Tyson right back with two shots to the body. Rabalta getting off the quicker punches there. When those guys stand toe to toe like they just a second ago and exchange punches, <laughs> I have a funny feeling, a funny suspicion that Tyson's punch is going to get there first. You notice when Rabalta throws his uppercut, his chin is wide open. He is so susceptible to the right hand. You notice how he throws his punches, Burn. He drops, he drops the other hand. The ball just seems to have lost maybe a half step here. You know, and again, Ray, the thing about Tyson is he just never seems to let his opponent catch his breath. Well, he never lets up. He keeps that momentum. He's like a train, locomotive. Right hand by Revolta. But he pays the price for every right hand he throws. Just me, Ray. Rabalta's legs just seem, he seems to be a little more stiff legged. He doesn't seem to have much bounce. But he, but he wasn't just trying to survive in that round. He was trying to land something. He's trying to fight. And I give him credit for that. Let's see if, let's see if Tyson can step it up here. You know what's frustrating in Mike Tyson is the tension, the tying up that Rebalta has been doing from the very first round. 
It's a good move on his part, mainly because he's not allowing Tyson to get his punches off as much as he wants to. We have a Spanish interpreter, and what he tells us went on in Rebolta's corner after that round, during that uh, timeout, was that they told him that Tyson has never been in a fight as tough as this. Now start to pressure him. I think, I don't know if he can pressure him, but I think the corner man who said that is absolutely right. Yeah, because unlike Tillis or Green, as he mentioned, Rivalda is staying in the fight. Rivalda has stand power. I mean, no one expects too much from Rivalda. It's a combination from Rivalda and also a low blow by Rivalda. The guy has a chin. Rivalda has a good chin. And that's what's been saving him thus far. I think what Mike Tyson would have to do to slow down or either stop Rivalda is to catch him in his tracks. Catch him while Rebalto is attempting to throw one of those looping uppercuts. Oh, no. And also, like uh, Tyson's going to say, got to throw more punches. Right in one punch. Tyson just missing that uppercut. Uh, break, break, break. Let him loose. Let him go. Step back. I do wrestling, you wrestling. There you go. Step back. Turn and move. Watch your head. Now, right, Rebalta has taken some right. very good shots from Mike Tyson. Hasn't let Tyson double up as much as Mike would like to, or as Kevin Rooney in his corner would like him to. That was a good left hand. Rebalta's fighting back. He's holding his own right now. Tyson is a little frustrated because he hasn't been in a fight like this before, a fight that wasn't an early knockout and in which his opponent continued to really fight back. So we're going to see if Tyson learned anything from his decisions, his previous 10-round decisions, and whether he can sustain it. And I think now, Ray, people are going to start to ask, is that vaunted punching power of Mike Tyson going to be able to take out the big, tough heavyweight so he hasn't fought yet? I think so. I think the, this, the style of Rebalto is creating a few problems for Mike Tyson. Maybe is the height, the height advantage. But uh, Rebalto has been doing the right thing. He's tying his man up. He's not allowing Mike Tyson to get off. He still is not seen, as Larry mentioned, the, the bigger heavyweights, the Burbicks at 227 or the Witherspoons at 230 or so. Remember, Rebalta is only 211. But he, he's rangy. I think his style creates problems for a guy like Mike Tyson. Another thing to mention is that Mike Tyson has never knocked out an opponent after the sixth round. So there's some new territory here for Tyson. They must have been studying a lot of films on Mike Tyson because he's fighting the right way. Every time Tyson gets close to his chest, tie him up and push his head down. And of course, Tyson went 10 rounds with Quick Tillis. Thank you. 
There was some tape that's hanging down what it was on the left glove of uh, the ball. There was a big right hand, and that hurt the ball. But again, Rivalta showing a good chin. He was hurt, no question about it. Here's Tyson at work. On the ropes, and there's that big right hand. But Revolta came right back. I imagine Tim Witherspoon is out there somewhere, and Mr. Burbick saying, My goodness, how hard does he hit? Quick exchange to start this, the eighth round. Crowd taking up a chant of Jose. Well, they're appreciative of what has been a rugged battle on the part of, can't say the challenger because it's not a championship fight, but the decided underdog, Jose Rivalta. And Jose got the worst of that one. The mouthpiece goes, and Tyson is on top of him. Rivalta ties him up. Rivalta appears to be wearing down now, though. We still got a long way to go in this eighth round, halfway. There's a big right hand, and Rivalta is about to go. Ties him up again, showing a lot of moxie. Look at Rivalta's legs. They're shot. There's no spring in his legs. This is all instinct. Shot in an uppercut again. Rivalta taking a lot of punishment in this round. And another big right hand. Back to the body. His mouthpiece has been knocked out so quite naturally. He, he's looking for a broken jaw here because he's standing straight up too bad. There is no spring. There's a smashing left hand, and wisely, Tony Battle will send five. Tyson to a neutral corner. That was very smart on the part of the referee because Rivalta's arms were locked in the ropes. Impressive round for Mike Tyson on a number of scores, mainly because he's shown that even late in the fight now he can he can summon the energy and the fury, which he didn't know he could do before he went ten rounds a couple of times in the spring. The most important thing right now, be quiet, 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 quiet. Relax, relax, get shit together, relax. Let's take a look at Tyson at work. There's a nice uppercut followed by a good two-punch combination and two rights. And there goes the mouthpiece all the way down to the casino. Later on in the round, it looked like he knocked something else out of his mouth, and it wasn't a mouthpiece, and I hate to even think about what it was. <laughs> Most fighters 
knockouts against good fighters are by attrition, not by just one big punch somewhere early in a fight. And Tyson has been wearing down a game opponent, and we'll see if he can wear them all the way down. And Rivalta's going to have to muster some legs from someplace because they're not under him right now. The legs of Rivalta are still not there yet. The spring is left. His best bet is to do is to continue to do what he's doing now. That's tie his man up. Oh, another big left hand. Oh, his legs. And he's out. He's really out and just on top of Mike Tyson. And Tony Battle will have to take a long look here. A right hand just zing by the chin of Rebalta. Look at the hands. Look at that left hand of Rebalta. Watch, watch for a straight right hand for Mike Tyson or the uppercut. And a long, long way to go here in the ninth round. That's the right hand, Barry. Again, the left hand of Rebalta is steady dropping. He is still dazed. He's tired. And now that Tyson, all he wants to do is counter. Tyson's really taking his time here, measuring his shots. Actually walked in with the left hand of Rebaltas. Tyson rushed himself. Got a little anxious for a second there. All he has to do is take his time, give a couple head fights, and drop that right hand. He let the ball to get off the hook. Tyson getting a little bit careless, it seems here. Well, he got a little over oh, anxious for a while, there. Just as he has to just pick his shot. I think he's surprised that uh, the ball is still standing because the ball was hurt a number of times. Ten seconds remaining here in the ninth round, and it appears as if Jose Rivalta will survive yet another storm. That's it. Come on, come on. Ready now? Last round, we touched love in the center. Touch him quick and fast. In and out, in and out. Last round, don't let him get brave on you. Look at him, baby. I don't know if this fight makes the ball a star in Miami, but he's earned some respect. No question about it. He's not run. He's not just tried to survive. He's tried to right, fight the man. He actually caught Tyson with an uppercut. Took two punches in return, but he did catch him with an uppercut. Only the third time that Tyson has been asked to go the limit here. Did it against Tillis, did it against Green, but Green ran from him. And Tillis tried to stay out of harm's way, pretty much. Jose Rebalta has fought him. And the crowd, again, showing its both appreciation and support for Jose Rebalta. But he is in some trouble. Oh, he's seriously hurt this time, though. Hey, how you doing? 
continue? Yeah, hell yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. So do you want to continue? He said, yeah, hell yeah. That's a fighter. And that's it. I want to say that there's no way Rebolta could win the fight. But I think the official was wrong for stopping it. He had come back from those punches before. There's no reason to believe that he couldn't have survived that round. Well, a tough way to go down to defeat by Jose Rebalta. But once again, he's another, another, a case of another fighter who probably made more friends by losing this fight to Mike Tyson than he has in his previous 22 victories. Well, if anything, Barry, he gained a great deal of respect from the, uh, the boxing public. I mean, he stood in there for 10 rounds with a vicious punch that looked like Mike Tyson. Let's take another look, Ray, at the end of it all. Big left hand there. That put Rivalta down. Well, Rivalta held his own. I was surprised and very impressed with the fact that he was able to really deal with the pressure of a Mike Tyson. He clinched, he tied Mike Tyson up, never allowed Mike Tyson really get off some good, clean punches until the later rounds. Here, Tyson with that aggressive style and working the left hook, he was able to hurt Rebalta a number of times, but Rebalta maintained his composure, very, very poised, and was able to retaliate with some punches of his own. And Tony Battle stepping in and saying, that's it, that's enough, after asking him the first time, and Rebalta's reply being, yes, hell yes, I want to go on. Tyson, and you would expect the fact that he landed more than twice the punches that Rebalta did. Tyson's always right on top of his man. That's what he did tonight, too. No secrets with Mike Tyson. Landing 68% of his punches, and that's pretty effective. He threw a lot of punches, and especially with the style of Tyson, um, bobbing and weaving, staying low. It's, per it's pretty difficult to land those kind of punches. And Rebalta just was unable to jab effectively. I can't really say, at least I wouldn't think, that that had a great effect on the outcome of the fight, but 24% effectiveness on the jabs of Rebalta. And 8 out of 10 for Mike Tyson. The time, 1 minute and 37 seconds of the 10th round. Referee stops the bow, winner by TKO, Mike Tyson. This is a big hand, a big hand for Jose Balta. A big hand for Jose Balta. Thank you. Congratulations, Mike. This guy was a tougher nut to crack than you thought, I bet. Fair enough. He had his mind concentrating. He was going to fight. He did well, and I commend him very dearly. What made him so tough? The fact that he fought back, unlike the other fighters who've taken you this far? Most definitely. He fought back, and he had um, the idea in his mind he wasn't going to get knocked out. But as you notice, he was knocked down, but wasn't knocked out because he had his mind conscious of that. Well, why, if you knocked him down the second round, the eighth round, why couldn't you finish him? Well, he, he was hurt pretty bad, and... Those are the breaks. I couldn't finish them. Were you disappointed? I know that Kevin Rooney, your trainer, was saying after about the fifth or sixth round, he's saying, you're stinking out the joint. Well, he was true. He was telling me not to motivate me. And like I say, these things happen. It happens to everybody. You feel like a pupil at that point who was flunking and that you had to, to try to get an A? Not at all. <laughs> I, still, I had a bad night. These things happen. Are there too many expectations of you, Mike? Do you think that if you don't, you're in a bind, that if you don't knock him out early, if you knock him out early, everybody says the other guy was a bum. If it, if it goes this far, everybody says you weren't, you can't hit that hard. Well, what can I say? This happens. <laughs> Are you anxious in this case because of, of the momentum you've created for yourself in your career to get on to some, quote, name fighters, top fighters, champions, and so on? Well, most definitely, I put a lot of pressure on myself, but what can I say? As I told you before, he was a tough fighter, and you don't knock everybody out. The greatest fighters in the world, I saw them. They, they won, and they lost, and they got stunk out. Robinson got stunk out by the fighter not named Cesario, who Johnny Bratton knocked out. And of the various fighters, it wasn't at the, nowhere near the caliber of Robinson. So you're satisfied the way it came out in the end? Most definitely. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mike.